Thank you for tuning in to a time of kingdom empowerment. I'm Pastor John Thomas, and I am so excited that, that you have tuned in on today to so that you can hear the word of the Lord, so that you can be encouraged, so that you can be empowered and also inspired to go out and do all that the Lord has placed on the inside of you to do so that you can leave a unique mark in the earth. Um, you know, during the, these, these times of, of crisis, not just in our nation, but in, in the world as, as a whole, this, this, is a, this is a time where we really need to be seeking after God and trusting in Him. So I, I know that God has, has, has given us a word as we get into His word on today, that He will encourage you and, and empower and inspire you in these times to to not to succumb to your fear, but to look up to him. Amen. Well, you know how we do on Kingdom and here, Kingdom Empowerment. We before we get into the word, we we pray. So let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this time of, of getting with you, getting, getting in your word. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would bring illumination and revelation to your word, Father, to, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to, to heal us, to restore us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I even ask that while your, your gospel is being taught, while it's being shared, while it's being preached, that signs, wonders, and miracles will take place in the lives of those that are, that, are, that are watching, that are tuning in on today. Bless your people, Father God. Work miracles, Lord. I thank you for healings taking place. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for signs and wonders taking place, oh God, in their lives, right there in their home. I thank you that your presence is there with them. That there's no distance that's tied to your glory. And I thank you, Father God, that whether they, whether while they're watching it now or even catch it another time, I thank you, Father God, that there's no distance in glory, Father God. And, and I thank you that you're moving by your spirit even now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, I want to open, op open your Bibles or your tablet or your phone to a... A, a, a common uh, uh, verse of scripture in Psalms, Psalms 91. Uh, a lot of Bible scholars say that Psalms 91 is the, is the Psalms of protection. And I believe that what God does not want us to do, he does not want us to succumb to the spirit of fear, the spirit of fear. Um, actually, before we go to Psalms 91, let's go to 2 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 7. 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Let me read that again. For God, the one that has created us, come on, has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us power, love, and a sound mind. You know, the, in, 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 in the Bible, the, the, where, where it speaks about, where, where it says fear not, in the Bible, it says the, the word fear not is recorded in the Bible 365 times, 365 times where you will find the word recorded in the Bible where it says fear not, where God tells us to fear not. 
365 times. Do you realize that there is 365 days in our calendar? So, so or before you start the new year. So in essence, every day God is telling you not to fear. Don't be afraid. Amen. Every day. But every day, walk in power, walk in love, and walk with a sound mind or a disciplined mind. Amen. You know, in, in, in these times during this, during this crisis that, that we are experiencing currently in our nation and also in the world, there is such a, a, a spirit of fear that has been released in, in, in the earth, you know, where, where during this pandemic where people are, are, are afraid and, and, you know, when, when, you're, when you're operating under a spirit of fear, it causes you to do things. It causes you to uh, uh, make hasty decisions. But I, I but I want to I want to I want to remind you that according to the word God says that I did not give you that, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. But I've given you power, I've given you love, and I've given you a sound mind. So we don't have to walk in fear. But God does want us to walk in faith. He does want us to walk in faith. You know. Where, where the scriptures tell us to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So during these trying times, God does not want you to walk in fear, but he wants you to, he wants you to walk in faith. So my encouragement to you, according to the word of God, is to get out of fear and to get in faith. Get out of fear and get in faith. Well, why? Why is that, why is that critical, Pastor? Well, it's critical because on, on an on a physical and actual sense, when you operate in fear, what, 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 what the spirit of fear brings, it brings anxiety. It, it, it causes your stress levels to escalate. When, and, and, and science will show you and teach you that when a person is under a lot of stress and anxiety, it causes their defense system, their immune system to break down which means that you're more prone to sickness. And it's amazing how this virus is, is moving. See, you, see we're, we're, we're cautious about trying to get this virus, but when your immune system is broke down, it leaves you open to other things. That's, that's why I believe that God says to us 365 times in the Bible, and for us to use that 365 days Fear not, but walk in faith. Amen? Hallelujah. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Why not? Because the, your Lord, your God, is with you. He's with you. He's with you in the midst of crisis. Listen, you can trust in him. You can trust in him. Amen? Now, there's a particular... Uh, uh, like I was saying earlier, as we were doing the broadcast, Psalms 91 is very critical at this time. Why is it very critical at this time? Because number one, you need, not, you need to get out of fear and you need to get in faith. That's the first thing that you need to do. Get out of fear and get in faith, you know. And then second, you need to begin to seek after, to, after the Lord. Seek after the Lord. Seek after him. Seek his face. What is his face? His face is a representation of his presence. Okay? Seek after him. Seek after the Lord. He, he, he says in the book of Jeremiah, if you, you know, those that seek me with their whole heart, there will I be found. Jesus says, when you seek me, you shall, you shall find me. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. This is a time where we need to begin to start seeking after God, seeking the Lord, seeking his face. Amen. So get out of fear, get in faith and seek his face. Seek to get into his presence. Hallelujah. God, listen, God is, is, is calling his people to come back to him and begin to seek him to, again. 
Listen, in times of crisis, listen, you, you, we, we have our science, we have everything that we've tried to hang our hat on, but when everything goes beyond your science, listen, you have to, come, you have to put your trust in a supernatural God that has the power to override any type of sickness and disease or virus or pestilence that's, that's, that runs rapid, that, that's running rapid in our, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our nation and in the world. This is the time where we must trust in him. This is the time where we are to walk by faith and not by sight. This is the time for us to get out of fear and to get in faith. Why? Because he did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us power. He's given us power. Can I tell you that God has given you a power and through your relationship with him, you have access to power. Because of what he did on the cross, it, it, for the, 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 John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It was that love that motivated him, and we are to also walk in that same love. Come on, and then he, then he uh, again, in, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, where he says that he's given us a sound mind, a disciplined mind. Come on, let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Come on, you walk with, learn how to walk with the mind of Christ. Come on, if you can walk with the mind of Christ, how do I get the mind of Christ? You get into the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on the word, which when he breathes on the word, you get revelation. Amen. You get, come on, he gives you revelation that that's, that's the fresh manna, come on, that he gives you to feed your faith. Come on, this is a time where you need to feed your faith and starve out your fears and your doubts. Hallelujah and begin to really seek his face, seek after the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But I, I want to read um, Psalms 91 to you. Hallelujah. Psalms 91. Listen to what it says. It says, and I'm reading out of the out of the King James. It says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Verse 3, Surely He shall deliver thee from the snares of the father and from the newsome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walk walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste at noonday a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Hallelujah. Verse 8, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, my habitation. Hallelujah. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling or come near your home or near you. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in, thy, in, in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he has set his love upon me. Hallelujah. Therefore will I deliver him 
I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy me and show him my salvation? Hallelujah. That's a good gospel news right there. Now, going back to verse one, see, the, the, the benefits of Psalms 91 is in verses three through 16. But the, the, but the prerequisite of Psalms 91 is in verse one, where he says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells. You see the word dwell? That means to pitch your tent. That means to, that that's where you live at. That means that's your habitation. Right? So that means that when I spend time in his presence, when I get out of, when I get out of fear and I get in faith and I seek his face, Come on, and I spend time with him in, in, in his presence in the secret place. Come on. I, I, I'm, I'm hidden, come on, under the shadow of the Almighty. That means his, his presence, his shadow becomes my protection as long as I dwell in the secret place. You know, Matthew 6 and 6 is a verse that, that has that I've, I've learned to commonly not just quote, but even practice in my own personal life, where it says, when, when Jesus told them, he said, when you pray, go into the room, close the door behind you, and pray to the Father in the secret place. And what you've done is secret. The Father will reward you openly that secret place. How do I get there? It requires you to spend time with the Lord. You have, listen, you have access to the secret place through Jesus. Jesus said, no one can come to the Father unless they first come to me, come through me, which means it starts with him. So, so when you ask the Lord, man, when you ask the Lord to come into your heart, he receives you, and because of his blood, you can pass through the Son and go into the secret place where the Father is. You know, and, and the rest of that verse says that, that no one, he says, no one comes to the Father unless they first come through me. Within my Father's house are many mansions or many rooms. You have access to the mansions within the Father, you have access to the rooms and the Father, when you first pass through Jesus. So in others, what I'm saying to you is your protection is within the Father. The secret place is within the Father. In order for you to get to the secret place of the Most High, you must first start with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. So, so this particular verse, you know, that we, that we quote all the time, well, I, I have protection. Well, you have protection when you have relationship with God. You when you when you get in and when you get out of fear and you get in faith, you know, you're able to also get into that place. Why? Because it's your faith that pleases God. You see that? It's your faith that pleases him. And and so when you get out of that fear, when you get out of that and when you let that fear go, because he never gave it to you, and you take hold of the things that he's given you. You have power, love, and a sound mind. And then you, and you get in faith. Then you begin to seek his face. Well, well, maybe you're one that's watching the wave and I've never, re I've never received God. I've never, well, you, you can receive him. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Repent for your sins, which means when you repent for your sins, come on, that means that you're doing a 180, not a 360, because if you were 360, that's, that's just means that you just did a complete circle and you went right back to where you were. But you want to make a complete change around, turn around in, within your life where you do a 180. Okay, you repent. 
you know, one thing that I, I would, by reading the scriptures that I've learned, is that about the presence of God, is that there's two things that will cause you to be separated from his presence. And granted, there's nothing that can separate you from his love, but he will withdraw his presence from you. That's sin and iniquity. Sin and iniquity. So in order to experience his presence, you must repent for your sins. And you must repent for the iniquity in your heart. Once you have done those things, his presence will come to you. Oh, you will have access to his presence. So this, so, so in, even in the midst of this crisis, you know, for, for some of us that have a relationship with God, and, and, but you're operating under a spirit of fear, shake that fear and get in faith and get into his presence. Or some of you that may, may be watching, you just happen to be turning the television on, you just happen to, to be watching on our other channels, and you have not received the Lord. Ask the Lord to come into your heart. The word of the Lord declared that they that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you can be saved. And when you repent of your sins and you ask him to come, he comes. His presence comes, which means that his, his love is never, never separated from you, but his presence comes to you. And when his presence comes to you, begin to seek after that every day. Begin to seek after him. Begin to pray. Begin to get in the word and spend time with him in the word. What an opportunity right now. I mean, if, if you think about everything that's going on in our nation, uh, uh, the things that are, you know, we, we, we talk about like the seven mountains of, of influence, you know, which is, uh, sp which is the arts and entertainment, which is the government, which is family, which is education, which is the media, which is the church. Um, this is the, the, I can't remember all of them, but those are most of the mountains that have been touched in society. And a lot of the things that we have enjoyed going out publicly have been affected. I believe this is a time where God is saying, turn your attention to me. This is, I believe God is saying, turn your attention to me. Repent of your sins. Turn your attentions to me. Get him, spend time with me. Get in my presence. Let me reset you and re reset your focus. Hallelujah. But in Psalms 91, in order for verses 3 through 16 to be effective in your life, you have to dwell in that secret place. And you have access to that secret place through Jesus. Listen to what his verse 2 says. He said, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Think about that. There's those last words that I said in that second verse. I will say of the Lord, I'm reading it again, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. How can you trust without relationship. How can you trust uh, and without relationship? So if, 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 if I'm able to trust, that means that I'm able to stay in faith and not in fear. Amen? Listen to verse 3 now. Surely he shall deliver thee or me. Come on. From the snares of the father. See, it, 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 it's, it's, that's talking like I trust. That's talking like I'm in faith. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snares of the father and from the newsome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror, in other words, verse 5, I don't have to be afraid of the terror by night, 
nor the error that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, or the pestilence that I can't see. Come on, let's say that this is the, this is the invisible enemy. We're in war with an invisible enemy. Amen. But I don't have to worry about that, that invisible enemy as long as I trust in the Lord and seek after him. Hallelujah. So this is a time where you repent of your sins, turn from them, get out of fear, get in faith, and seek after him with everything in you. Everything in you. Let me pray with you. Stretch your hands towards me. Father, I pray for your people on today, Father God, that those that have been uh, um, bombarded by or overwhelmed by the spirit of fear, we, I come against that spirit of fear right now that is attacking them, that is attacking their belief system, that's, the, that's, that's, that's causing hysteria in this nation and in the world. I come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, I, I decree, decree and declare, Father God, that, they, that, they, that your peace that surpasses all understanding will begin to overwhelm them, Father God. Uh, Father God, I, I, I thank you, Father God, that on today, Father God, that they will begin to get in your word and listen to your word and, and feed their faith and starve their doubts and fear in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that they will begin to seek after you. Seek after your presence. I thank you, Father God, that Matthew 6 and 6 will be added to their daily regimen in life. That when they pray, they go into the room, they shut the door, they pray to you in the secret place. And what's done in the secret place, Father God, you shall reward them openly. I thank you when they do that, Psalms 91 will be in manifestation in your life. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, with me on today, be encouraged and be empowered. Listen, we we are still um, having having service here at Kingdom Empowerment Ministries, even if we're just doing live, even if we're just doing live, so that you can you can also catch us on Facebook. We do have a Facebook page. Um, you can you can. Um, Locate us on Facebook through Kingdom Empower. Kingdom Empower is our Facebook link where you can watch us also. Okay? And then um, our, our address here at Kingdom Empower is 2700 Pine Grove Avenue here in Port Huron, Minnesota, Port Huron Michigan. Our, our services on Sunday start at 12 noon. Okay? We love you and we are praying for you. And I'll see you next time for your kingdom empowerment. Blessings.